I'm actually really excited for this conversation. I've been looking forward to it for a long time, to be very honest, and I'm really happy that we're here. So thank you for being here, Martin, and welcome to the show. <laughs> thank you for inviting me. I've been looking forward to this. It's maybe it's just mirroring, you know, mirroring your your anticipation. So uh, I'm glad to be here. Yes, I I feel I woke up this morning just. And I even I think I've been thinking about it really all week, but there's just a synergy that we've connected with. And I think we have a lot. It could very well be mirroring, but just also there's something on this heart level for me that I'm feeling that we've connected in a deeper, maybe a transcendental way that I have with other previous guests. So it's been really nice to just be able to have the space and kind of dive into what we dive into today and let what comes through come through. Yeah. Oh, very cool. I first wanted to start off with um, why I thought you were very interesting when I came across your profiles. Your um, tagline is spiritual awakening through shamanic journey. So mm -hmm. can we dive into that and what your experience has been? Maybe like what is the most profound experience you've had that got you where you are? You know, that's probably a really loaded question. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Then there's so many aspects and for people who are like what is that like what is a what is a shamanic journey what's a spiritual awakening like there's a lot of terms here so let's let's break it down yeah so uh let's see <clears throat> i would say spiritual awakening through shamanic journey is pretty much my last 10 years so i started with the shamanic journey as a first first kind of spiritual um maybe practice or encounter that i had and it was just random because a friend of mine uh, had done it before and he had talked about the totem animals and i was always always have been in love we talked about this with animals and so um he got my attention and i was not a spiritual person at that time i was studying sports economics was just a regular kind of guy and um through that practice of the shamanic journeys i connected more and more with spirituality with uh other unseen phenomena i started doing animal communication and telepathy and all that kind of all all that came out of that and so for me the the path has always been to go inward through that shamanic journey and the question what it is it is basically a little bit like a meditation like a visual meditation or a sensational meditation where we get in touch with our uh, subconscious where we, where we are getting in touch with other realities that are also real but not as seen as uh, the the reality that we usually converse in and so um i would say um the tagline is that because my my whole approach in coaching and everything i experienced is based on my experiences from shamanic journeying and that spiritual awakening in that sense that uh there is more to life than what we perceive with our eyes and maybe regular senses. And that's why, why I call it that. Thank you for breaking it down. And I, I have like lots of questions. I tell you this in our pre-call. I'm like, I have all these questions. I want to wait <laughs> um, so that I can learn on the show too. I'm curious. So I, I also have a very deep background in spirituality as well. So I understand that there's more to the to the seen world and I can tap into the unseen as well. And I'm curious with your shamanic journeying, is that, have you accessed that through like meditation or plant medicine assistance? Or I think you mentioned that there's a medicine wheel that you work with as well. Um, how do you, what are your journeys like? I guess is my question. Yeah, there's, there, there's they are so different like really the, and and you asked me quite a couple of questions, so I'm trying to find out. Okay, so uh, it's non-medicine non, non, uh, non induced, so there's no uh, no substances in, taken in before the journey. It's it's pretty, pretty plain for uh, 
what people know of ayahuasca ceremonies or mescaline um, ceremonies. It's quite the, 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 and to be honest, the uh, impact those journeys had, like those last 10 years, the journeys, they have been impactful enough for me. I could never imagine how would it be if, if we use an amplifying medicine in that ceremony because I was already um, out of my comfort zone enough to say that, you know, so it is, and that maybe the common theme for, uh, for depending on the person is that uh, I'm, I'm more visually in my shamanic journeys, even though I, I am auditorial in my perception a lot, but my, my journeys are often uh, where I see things in third person, oftentimes it's not always, but usually I would say I see certain things in third person and um, am more of a spectator than uh, uh, like the object or the person who really perceives it, but it shifts sometimes. And, but that has to do a lot with my control issues. I would say that I'm trying to control the journey. And if I would be able to let go more, I would probably uh, the the perspective would sometimes changes, you know. So it depends on the person. Some people are more in their feelings. They they do shamanic journeys and they they have different ways of um, journeying. So they feel a lot. They work with their bodies a lot. So I I couldn't say there is one one way, you know. So it always depends on the people and on their way of how they how they um journey and what is what is coming up right now you know yes is there a sense of like breath work involved to get you to into the journey itself or when you're in the journey so i know you said you're visual and some can be uh, in their bodies or feelings right what's coming up i'm curious the breath is absolutely excuse me, absolutely powerful. And I feel we're not taught it often, or if at yeah. all. And so I, I do my best to practice as much breath work. But when I go into some really deep healings, when I'm doing like trauma work, or I'm doing a really deep meditation, the breath will always take me there it takes some time, but it gets me into my body. So I'm curious um, what that experience is like for you. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that is that is the, the one thing that is probably that is the one thing that is a common theme that my uh, my mentor always told us to keep breathing and to use the breath. So so there is definitely the breath is is our key uh, because you said it when when we work with trauma or when we work with with uh, resistance. If there's any kind of resistance, I have two options. I can fall asleep because I'm not connecting with the emotion or what whatever happens or I can breathe through it and then go deeper into it so it happens both ways sometimes sometimes it gets kind of like uh, a little foggy I would say I'm I, I'm learning to accept these journeys as well some some years ago I thought I failed in a sense when I fell asleep or got doozy but now I know that that it is also a way of working with what what is happening only on a different plane, on a different level. So, mm -hmm. but the breath work is definitely very important, and I would say it gets even more important when we get to body sensations, when we get to energy blockages in the body, when we feel there's a pulsating going on, and then then it is really important to use the breath and to breathe into these places and to let the let the uh, energy shift so definitely it's an essential component yeah beautiful what would you say the integration is afterwards so i know that um from what i've heard with with plant ceremonies so like ayahuasca or um like even just like a a safe container mushroom trip or psychedelics so since i like to call them plant medicines because they are medicines of the earth there's an integration period that is very necessary um, to happen afterwards so even with breathwork ceremonies or trauma healing as well it's really important to hold this integration period after to kind of settle in and reflect on what just released 
I'm curious if that is in alignment with your journey as well. So, um, because I've never been been into these ceremonies, maybe you just want to want to talk about how that integration works, and then I can tell you how how that relates, or if it relates, or if there is something different. Yeah, well, I personally haven't done like a, I haven't done an ayahuasca ceremony. Um, I know that that's probably one of maybe the biggest one that requires. Actually, I don't know. I'm, I'm just that's a generalization. So I can't say that take it back. But I know that most psychedelics, even when it, people are doing it recreationally, which is why it can get a little fuzzy because um, we are misusing or mishandling a powerful medicine from the mm -hmm. earth. So um, we will take LSD for an example. It's not from the earth, but it's still very powerful. It's potent. Um, it can be used as medicine. If someone misuses it, um, they can have a very, very intense experience because it's essentially doing the same. It's bringing you through, bringing up what needs to come up, what's working through you. Um, and if you just kind of jump back into the default world afterwards, it can really mess someone up because they're not understanding the process. It's almost, it can, it can create a traumatic experience. So, um, that's why I think at least what I'm learning is that if you're going to do these very sacred practices, um, whether that's in a contained space or not, or with intention without, it's really important to give yourself some space after to integrate, to say, okay, this is what came up. Um, personally, I, I am more on the non-recreational side. Like I said, I, I think it's, they're very powerful medicines to revere so that we can get deeper into those unseen layers of ourselves and to connect with the universe and and god and the world right so having that integration period after of like this is what happened this is what i learned and now mm -hmm. i'm slowly walking back into human human life mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. instead of like kind of crash landing <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah so i guess um it is a little different uh, when we look at my coaching sessions because their time, the, the time constraint is different, you know, but when, uh, when, when I'm doing a workshop or when I'm attending a, a workshop, then it's usually that we have, um, we have a teaching in the beginning, depending on what, what we're doing in the day. Like what is, what is the intention for the day that I am setting for the group? So if it is a basic shamanic journey seminar, when it's really when the when the main intention is to give the give the participants an easy understanding of the different layouts of non ordinary reality, and uh, what a shamanic journey is and what how it affects kind of like how these two non ordinary and ordinary reality affect each other that 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 um, overlap, then um that teaching is in the beginning then we will do one two three depending on the time that we have shamanic journeys and then after each journey there will be circle work so everybody will share their journey and we'll talk about what they what they experienced and the beautiful thing about circle work to me is that the circle is coming together in space and time and all these people that don't usually don't know each other or oftentimes don't know each other bring something to the circle, which is important for everyone to hear, even for me, not even, but that sounds ridiculous. But me as not being the part that is actively speaking about their journey because I'm facilitating the journey. For me, every journey is important and is a lesson as well. So uh, this this is the integration I would say is most important in the shamanic journey uh, retreats and workshops because I never know when I'm a, a participant when when will I be in that situation that somebody talked about and they had a journey to that so um, the benefit of having someone had kind of like go through that journey and talking about their journey there is so many, so many, so many blessings that I receive from my 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 group, the steady group that I'm um, getting my education in, of journeys where somebody spoke about certain things 
you know, and I remember that. And it, it's just like, as I've, I would have done it, you know, because we share it. And so I would say that's the integration that we usually do. And then there is a, there is a different integration when we, when we, when we close the circle and everybody goes off into those places where they came from, then, then the workshop or the, the journey will affect them in their new uh, stage as well. And they will have to, to work with that by themselves a little bit. And if it gets too intense, then they will reach out and talk to me and say, this is what's happening. I'm kind of like at a loss here. I need some help. I need some guidance. And then we will work with that. That's incredible. It's incredible. And I'm curious to hear like your experience of as a facilitator to hold this beautiful space for these people who, who may be going in, not knowing um, what's going to happen or, or also I just, I'm a big proponent of, of spiritual awakening or just like self-realization. And most of the time it comes from a very hard hardship, right? There's a death, there's a loss, there's a breakup, there's some sort of grief or some kind of shake up financial yeah. crisis, right? And it is the worst. It's awful in the moment, right? And you're just like, yeah. Nah. But when and if that person goes through it and you come out of it, it just it's like I love witnessing it when I when I do have this beautiful opportunity to see someone go through this metamorphosis, so to speak. It's a beautiful thing and I'm I'm curious I'm like very fascinated and curious like your experience if you're open to sharing how that is for you and um do most people go in with this fear and and su or suffering and come out with this light or <laughs> hmm. what's that like cuz I I'm I'm again we can talk I would I would love to talk about like the fear and suffering path into yeah. surrender yeah. because I'm still working through surrender, right? Surrender is a very hard, feels very hard, complex to, to, to flow in, so to speak. But it's, I feel like that's where we, we are led to go is this ultimate surrender. Yeah. So, um, to be honest, it breaks my heart and in the circle when somebody is really like, it, I just had that a week ago at a workshop and and the person was really really struggling she was struggling and i was like man this this hurts so much you know i'm 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 with you and i think i can only do this work now because i've let, let kind of i went through that so many times in myself and in others when uh, during a workshop when I was attending some years ago when somebody is in that state you still hold that space even though I'm not the facilitator I'm still with that sadness or with that anger and so it is difficult and when 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 a person is able to to go through that and to come come kind of like come out of it lighter that is beautiful but it is just um I would say I'm I'm usually open to the whole process, you know. I I'm 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 curious in facilitating that because the 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 beautiful thing for me is and I'm growing into that but time after time again is when when I'm holding that space and when I'm drumming the drum and everybody's journeying then uh, I don't really have an assignment. Uh, my assignment is first and foremost to drum the drum and to hold that space. But my my totem animals, and that is that is the most fascinating, what I think, the next level shit in a way that I feel sometimes someone is struggling. And then I send, for example, my sea turtle to someone. I don't know why. It just feels like, okay, sea turtle wants to go there. Well, go there. And then uh, sometimes, not always, those people will talk about that a sea turtle appeared in their journey. I'm just like, man, I'm not saying anything, but uh, it's just like, it's uh, just nice to to see that, that it actually, that that person uh, was open and, and received that help in that sense, you know? So, but it's, like I said, there's no expectations. I usually just go with the flow and uh, when the journey is done and people share, I'm doing my best to just be uh, as as 
uh, selfless as possible, if that makes sense, to just be a conduit for whatever questions come up in my mind, to just ask them if there's something I want to, or not I want to say, but if there's something I feel I need to say, to say it, and uh, to just be a part of that holy circle that we opened and if there is something that the person needs to just let it flow that is that is the most difficult thing because in the beginning i was always afraid am i doing anything wrong am i not am i not saying the right words am i saying the wrong words am i making a mistake you know to just trust that whatever comes up will come up and that the 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 circle is open that we call it the four directions the helpers and the spirit guides and that that is actually something to trust in and that is something i'm growing into more and more the more i do it and the more i learn it yes conduit is the perfect word to say because you are you're this portal you're this vessel this this conduit to to facilitate this light to facilitate the energies to allow the guides everything to work through you right through to allow miracles to allow source all the things and i would love to go through this animal totem because i've never heard i wouldn't say i never heard of it but i don't know much about it and i'm very curious i'm very I guess fascinating is the word that really wants to come up. <laughs> um, but 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 you hit something that's really important, especially in this in this work of finding self and learning and journeying and awakening is being open. And I feel that that can be a little challenging at first, so to speak, as well. Um, maybe not for everyone, but for some people just learning how to be open to receive and like bring down those barriers. I mean, but if someone's at your workshop, they're somewhat already kind of open to the work, right? So. Maybe, maybe just, they stumbled into it, you know, and <laughs> don't know what's going on. Some people left in my last workshop, someone just got up and left, that happens, but it's okay. Nobody's mm -hmm. forced to stay. Mm -hmm. Maybe they just wasn't, wasn't the time yet. Right? Yeah. Always trusting in that. It goes back to like trusting in my doing it right or wrong. It's like getting that, getting out of the ego space and really tapping in to true self, higher self, like source and being again, that conduit. And I always love that expression because you never know who needs to just hear those words. So you trust in that. And maybe it's not resonating with you, quote, quote, yourself. But someone will, I used to teach um, fitness for seniors and then I teach yoga on the side and I'd always have someone come up and say, wow, I really needed to hear that little piece at the end or I really yeah. needed to hear that closing. I'm like, wow, it just came to me. I don't even remember what I said, to be honest. Like I was so yeah. tapped in and that's, that's the beauty of being that conduit, to being that portal. <laughs> Absolutely. And you say it like sometimes it's not meant that even if, if if I'm in the mirroring process with the person who had that journey and I'm telling them something, maybe it's not that person who needed to hear it. Maybe it's someone else who is just following that and is kind of like going through something that is not maybe the priority of that topic today, but maybe last week or in uh, in, in a week or something, it is what, what they needed to hear. And so to trust in that, absolutely. Even if that person says that doesn't resonate with, with me, you know, if I'm saying, well, this feels to me like this journey here and have you looked at that? And I have the feeling that this is important to look at. And they say, no, that's not. And that's that's okay too, but maybe... Like I said, maybe it was someone else's uh, Im Im impulse that they needed to hear. So absolutely, just trust in and whatever comes up is okay. And uh, mis mistakes, mistakes are is as much as I like to look for pitfalls and making mistakes and getting better. You know, to just trust. Okay, there's the word mistake has. Not really. It it has a place in the circle, but it, there's not really something that wants to be called a mistake because it's not being or it's not giving it giving it giving it kind of like the right appreciation. Yes, the dogs are being very vocal today, so I. <laughs> 
they're enjoying. <laughs> I don't, don't want to speak. <laughs> no, truly, they're usually very quiet. And today they're just, they're like, hey, what's up, Martin? <laughs> Tell me more. Um, <laughs> to go back to what you were saying, I always go back to this Ram Dass quote. It's my favorite part of his, if the Be Here Now book, um, where it's a page that talks about no accidents, no miracles. And it, it goes back to that no mistake, right? It's mm -hmm. everything is, you could say, divinely orchestrated or divinely planned. Um, but it's not an accident. It's not a mistake or a miracle. Everything is kind of there has it has its purpose. Um, and some people kind of I've had a conversation where someone's like, well, isn't that taking away like free will? I don't know how to answer the question, to be honest. I think I've been so deep in the path of my own experience of of connecting the dots again, and being like, actually, that wasn't an accident or that's not a coincidence, you know, or if this didn't happen then it really wouldn't have been here kind of there. So I don't really see or subscribe to that. Um, this is a mistake or like we had talked about right before we jumped on of having my experience with the dog yesterday is like, I woke up this morning and I went into meditation and my heart was just feeling heavy of like, why is this happening? I just feel like I was at the precipice of feeling, you know, I've been working through this fear of loss and abandonment for the last two years. And I just feel like I was at the point where I was okay leaving her and I was okay trusting that I've accepted that she's older and, you know, her time is limited and all this complex stuff that I have truly been working through deeply. And um, I just had this very clear download the uh, ascended masters were like, I envisioned this dark hole, kind of like a, I wouldn't say a cave, but like an excavation hole, right? And it took me all this time to figure out how to climb out of, climb out of this hole. And it finally got to the top and then they just doop, <laughs> pushed me back in mm -hmm. yesterday. And I fell all the way back down and I was like, oh my goodness, you know, like why this isn't, you know, my ego self is like this is unfair how could you do this to me but what they were come what was relaying was um you know how to get out now like you know the way of how to get mm -hmm. out of this cave versus before mm -hmm. i was trying to figure it out and i was like well this way and the the rocks are too crumbly on this side and a lot of trial and error is essentially what was what was being conveyed and so now this time it's like there's a reason why this happened so that you can see that you can get out of it now versus before my old pattern was a lot of woes, a lot of um, pity and depression and I can't do this and lots like just despair, I think is, is the way I'm trying to explain it. And so now with all of this practice, with all of this healing, it's like, okay, yes, it's going to be painful, but I know I know which rock to reach now. And I know that I can get out of it and know that I'll be okay. Um, that was so profound to me today. And I don't remember why I started the story. <laughs> but yeah, that was huge. Yeah, and it it, it, it is, you, you started with a Ram Dass quote, maybe that helps. Oh, that. yes, thank you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> That's why I, I'm, I'm sitting in this today with seeing that the surgery wasn't the cancer coming back wasn't a, wasn't an accident or, or a mistake. There's a reason why I had to go through the surgery again, because the first surgery, perhaps I didn't learn the lesson I needed to. I like kind of brushed it off and we're like, cool, we're out of it, had to do it again. And then now coming May going through that second surgery was very hard, but that's where I kind of, I embrace that acceptance and now having this little heat seizure was this another non-coincidence of like okay let's let's kind of see where you are back in in the hole to get you out so it's not a coincidence is what i'm trying to say <laughs> no yeah. accidents no miracles no coincidence no mistakes it's like it's all purposely planned for our soul's ascension yeah, if we if we let it, let it, right? 
So um, attachment, attachment is really like, I, I love, I love all those spiritual masters I work with and Ramdas is really, uh, is, it's, it's interesting uh, because in uh, 2018, I was in Maui or on Maui and I met uh, a really cool dude from uh, Eugene, from the Eugene area in Oregon. And he told me, you don't know Ramdas, you have, you have to, you have to kind of like get his book. And so I got a book, but it was still here now. So a book, which is dealing about death. Right. Yes. And I was, mm -hmm. I was not connecting with that. And I felt like, what, why, why, why should I listen to that? That's absolutely not anything that's interesting to me right now. And then at some point, I think I saw uh, going home, his Netflix small kind of like, it's a 30 minute video. It likes most beautiful uh net like if anybody is who got netflix accounts and you have not seen that you you should see it because it, there's no nowhere else you can't buy it and it's just such a beautiful movie 30 minutes or something and um ramdas being also the person that he was and staying on maui and being connected to hawaii kind of like gave, gave me uh a, another approach because I felt like we were really close in that we both loved Hawaii. We're not alone in this, but um, I started listening to his talks and his books and everything. So uh, what I wanted to say is that I think he's, he's for example, he's sitting in the um, Northwest of my spiritual council. And so the Northwest is basically North would be uh, wisdom and the West is grown, grown up hood and kind of like uh, being, being starting to be on our own feet. That would be the, the, the image of the West and the North is the, the, the wise person, the elder who gives his knowledge. So he's kind of like in between there. And um it's just every time I, I get to his teachings, it's just like I'm always looking forward to all of my spiritual teachers who are sitting in that spiritual spiritual council. Right now, I'm starting with Wayne Dyer again, and I'm so happy. I've been looking, <laughs> I've been looking forward to that such a long time because uh, it's just like I don't know. So all of these teachers have so many, so many good teachings, and they're basically saying the same thing. Um, but I wanted to just give you a small story of my brother who to he told me, but, but don't you get confused if you listen to all these people and all their messages? And I'm saying, no, they're saying basically the same thing. It's just <laughs> a different, different way of putting those words into context. And so uh, that's why I love Ramdas because he's, he's, I don't know. It just makes it so simple. It sounds so simple. And he's always so humble has been so humble you know when he got caught and he talks about like Maharaji being uh kind of like being a microphone stand or something where he got caught and being angry or something and <laughs> so it's uh it's really beautiful thank you for mentioning mentioning yes. that yes Ramdas is on my altar I like like see him every day <laughs> he's definitely one of my guides and my teachers I he was actually the first teacher that I came across when I was when I had my first huge spiritual awakening like the, the thing that catapulted me on to my spiritual path was Ramdas and I just like I always dreamed that I would go see him in Maui and I was so sad that I didn't do that last year I was like I should do it I just I need to do it I know that he probably I feel like he's he is very open about being ready to go and yeah. um I didn't make it so but I'm still connected to him and I just uh I'm so grateful like you said he makes it so easy and uh, there's some yeah there's something about him that is just very connected <laughs> yeah yeah and and I, I totally agree with you because um when I was living in Ireland somebody told me that Wayne Dyer lived on Maui and did retreats and that, but he had been passed, he had passed away already by then. Mm -hmm. And so um, 
I learned of Ram Das and heard when 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 he passed on, I was just like, man, that's so sad. And now Eckhart Tolle is like one of the last people in my spiritual council who's still alive. And then I'm just like this year, he's because he's in Mau on Maui on a retreat and I'm just, I'm going. Yes. I, w- I wanted to go anyways, <laughs> and I will be on the big island anyways. So I felt like doesn't matter. I want to go because I don't know how long he will be here. And it, it, it is, it makes no difference, right? If, if those teachers are with us physically or in, in, in the non-ordinary sense, but still, it feels like I went to a, a, to a, a speaking engagement of Eckhart Tolle here in Germany. And it is that something different. It is being in that presence, you know, and feeling that and being connected with that. So not that it that it is something people who can't go are not really missing out, I feel. It's not meant to be that if you can't make it, you, you've... you've miss an essential component but it's just i want to experience that at least once you know yeah Yeah, in the flesh yeah in the flesh so i know that you mentioned that you're going to be on the big island soon do you want to tap into that and tell us what your vision is to be in hawaii oh my god it's just like (laughs) this feels like um it feels like really something which is challenging me so much every time I, I I get into that because the vision is basically to create a refuge where uh, or retreat where people can go and spend ninety days work with the work with the land work with people work with uh, facilitators of any kind you know. I've been in a in a nonprofit festival and uh, convention scene in Germany where it's a lot about creating benefits for people who don't have access to money, who don't have a lot of uh, resources to usually frequent these events. And so my vision, which is something that just got to me, you know, um, of that retreat is... Um, is basically what it is about it it's probably uh, connected with coffee growing because coffee in hawaii is uh is a valuable asset and if 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 i imagine there's a, a community of people who are just enjoying picking the coffee and roasting the coffee or maybe just sending it and processing it to uh, the united states australia and europe then that would be a really valuable product in a sense where the retreat could make some make some income with. But basically, the energy in Hawaii is uh, I've I've not been traveling the world a lot, so I can't say I I've seen every nook and nook and place on this earth. But it's definitely something that is very special to me, and um, the Big Island is a very grounded energy it's kind of like the the lava and the it's it's the newest the newest place on earth you know it's the youngest place that is still being born on this uh, on this earth and the the um the island is the the friend that i just talked about on maui he said either people hate it and they leave the plane and they turn on their kind of like heel and want to just get out get out and want to leave immediately or other people love that energy and it's it's i would say i just loved it i got there loved it from the from the get-go even though i love the other islands too big island is just it's a very very uh loving but stern or you know if there's kind of like pele have you ever heard about pele as a goddess for fire and Lava is kind of like an, a Hawaiian deity, and she's uh, she's very strong and very loving, but no bullshit. You know, there if stuff comes up, it just it comes up, and you cannot do anything about it. So that's the what what people might might feel when they want to leave. You know, because it's just like no getting away from that transformative energy, and so um, that is. Uh, I don't know. It's just like, I love it there. And um, 
Yeah, I would love to to have have it have it be a place where it is a, a, a beneficial place for everyone. You know, Hawaii is a really difficult place because there is a lot of uh, land grabbing going on or there's a, a um, situation where people can't afford to live there anymore. Native Native Hawaiians who have to move to the mainland and uh, people international uh, wealthy people get get to buy all the land and don't really spend much time have their holiday homes there so it's it's uh, not an easy thing to talk about I want to create something there as a foreigner you know because it's always the the one 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 part of me is apologetic in a sense that I want to I want to create something where everybody has value and where there could be a benefit for everyone involved you know so it is not easy and that's why i feel this vision is freaking me out more more than it, more than it should be but it's uh it's in the making you know i will just go along and if it if it happens it happens and i will give my energy my life energy into that and if it doesn't it's also okay yes and i'm so excited for you because it's meaningful and if you weren't freaked out about it if you weren't nervous or had you know some like anxiety around it it doesn't mean it wouldn't be as big of a, a project um i guess you can say it that way i think that this the quote is like if it's not so meaningful you wouldn't be like so nervous about it right but this is something that's it's like a baby your child that you're envisioning i also just want to point out that it's not a coincidence that you're going to the big island when it's been in the past like ramdas like wayne they've created this spiritual um sorry i wouldn't say um they've created this these beautiful places there right and so i'm what's coming up for me is so like mount shasta is like a very big energy portal in the earth, right? I think it's like the root chakra of the of the earth. I'm curious if Hawaii is also another big energy portal or the big island so specifically, so that more individuals as yourself are going there and creating these beautiful sanctuaries to also give back to Gaia to like to to support her energy there as well. So the more souls as yourself and, and the people that you're attracting and, and the work that you're doing and the contribution that you're doing to the planet and to spirit and to earth it's uh it's all just compounding i i that's what's coming from coming through to me and i think it's it's beautiful but it's again not coincidence that it's all there i mean you're in germany right and so yeah. for all places in the world you're You've been called to go there, and um, I have no doubt that things were going to fall fall in place for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> very <th> supportive. <laughs> Thank you. <clears throat> at, at least, at least, uh, someone is convinced. You know. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're following. You know, you're following yeah. that call, and yeah. that's the most important part because so many people will have a call and they will not follow it. Right. Or they'll say, mm, maybe not this year. Like I didn't go see for maybe maybe that was a reason for me. I wasn't supposed to see Ramdas, perhaps. But my life might have been extremely different had I had followed that um, that that nudge to go and see him. Right. And I can't get that time back. So there's if I could go back, I would absolutely do it. And so now I always um, I came across something I was reading the other day. And it was saying, like, in your last moments of life, what will you look, will you, what will you think back on and say, like, oh, I wish I had done that or I did, I wish I didn't do that. And, you know, it's reflection of the end of life stage. And it just, it puts me into perspective every day with what I'm building, um, with what I'm experiencing with, like, my dogs and myself, my personal life, professional life. And it's those trade-offs of, okay, well, I can work and then I trade off my time with my animals or I can, you know, spend time with them and myself and just kind of back off on the work. And I think, I'm, I think, oh, I'm young, but also I don't know how much time I have, right? And so for me, I guess my gift is I have this fragility. I understand the fragility of life 
And so I always encourage people to just go for it because you just never know. And it might not work out, okay, but you tried it. And that's the beauty because you will, whenever time is to go back into the spirit realm, will know on a human, on your human level, you already, you tried and did all the things that you at least wanted to. Um, Maybe you won't get through all of the things, but the things that meant the most. And um, so what I'm trying to say is go for it. (laughs) I'm so excited for you. (laughs) Absolutely. And uh, thank you. I, 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 uh, I wrote, it's some years some years back i wrote a, a blog article of uh, based on the idea that what if we had a high time a half time high five like your yourself in the moment you die comes to your half time mm. when you have exactly half of the time and tells you gives you a high five and says now every day counts this far you had exactly you're exactly at the tipping point so every day that you live on will be the last kind of like we're going towards the end and to just use that and say well i know this has been my high high uh, high five and it's it's my my life is going to end soon and you will know when you die because you can count right if if it's with 30 i get my high, uh, half time high five with 30 i know it's my 60th birthday or something so um but I love that idea. And I've been, I've been gifted in that sense that I, I made a lot of mistakes in my, in my CV, in that sense, in my choices of work and everything. Um, but I always did what I felt like I needed to do. So the question, I know that people ask themselves, what if I die? What will be, what will be, what will I be looking back on that I didn't do? And to be honest, that's the one thing that makes me pretty happy to say there is nothing. Every, everything that I feel I want to do, I will do my best to do it. And if it slips away and I didn't do it, then I at least gave it all I had. Uh, me being a, a professional musician, for example, I gave it five five years of my life, and I gave everything I had at the time, and it it was not meant to be. And then I said, well, this time I I said I will use five years. I have used five years now, and I will go on. You know, so I think it's important that we that we do follow these feelings and follow our dreams and say, well. Wayne Dyer, for example, says, don't die with your music still in you. So what is it that we are here to bring out into the world and to live every day with purpose and to follow that purpose and not knowing if we reach it, if we reach that place or not, and still being kind of like happy that we're on that, on that road to that, which we seek to find. (laughs) So perfectly, beautifully said and conveyed. And I, I I completely agree with you, like more than new numbers can consume. <laughs> more than a thousand percent, basically. Um, but yes, thank you for sharing that. And I love, I just love all of it. I think that's a perfect, perfect place to to wrap this up because we've touched on some beautiful things that I've I've definitely gained so much from, and I am excited for all those souls that we can touch today through this, through our exchange. And um, before we go, I do want people to know where they can find you and and if they wanted to work with you, how they can work with you. Um, do you do your workshops online too? Yes. Yes. Okay, cool. So um, light trails, as in the opposite of darkness, light and trails as in what happy trails or illumination lines. <laughs> light, <laughs> light trails.co is uh, the website of my of my coaching practice. And um I work with people one-on-one if they're interested. I have a 16-week program, life. it's called Life Program, and it's really awesome. I can only say everybody who's interested in shamanic journeying and in creating vision and purpose, that program is absolutely awesome. I love it. I, I'd love to do it myself. 
can't do it. I can do it, but I can't do it that way. <laughs> and uh, webinars and workshops I do. And for those, because I think you're on uh, Pacific time, right? So <clears throat> those people who live on the West Coast, I will be in, uh, in Hawaii starting the end of September and hopefully until March. So the time zone differences will be in those people's favors that I will not be nine hours ahead like I am right now, but three hours behind. So uh, that will be a possible thing to work with me. And I'm in the process of releasing shamanic journeys on YouTube and some guided meditations, but that will just take some time, you know, step by step. Step by step, brick by brick, breath by breath, just take it it's like advice for myself too but we have to remember that it's all going to unfold in its timely manner going back to ramdas right just really trusting in the now and building as we as we can we're in such a fast society of like gotta build gotta go fast and yeah. it's reeling back in to say if this is supposed to be for me if this is right i'm putting my life force into it and i'm trusting that universe source god and whatever you want to call it is coming back to assist me and meet me halfway kind of thing or meet me more than halfway right <laughs> yeah yeah and i think the beautiful thing last thing is to know about totem animals you know i've been always yes. i i've been so slow you know i hated that I was just like I'm always so slow I don't know why I'm so slow you know and the last totem that I found when I was in uh in Hawaii my last trip in 2019 I had a really really beautiful meeting with the sea turtle mm. massive sea turtle and uh that was the time when when the totem showed up the sea turtle showed up for myself and I understand the sea turtle is so slow on land you know it's just like it's taking so much effort to get out of the water and to every kind of like little bit to get up on the beach it's just like looks strenuous I don't know if it is strenuous but it just looks strenuous but in the water they're just so 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 elegant and flowing you know so I understand okay sometimes the energy is just like slow and I have that sea turtle energy and it will cost me a lot of effort to do certain things on land but in the water if I'm in my element you know then it's it it can be effortless and that is also important to connect with that so if people know about their totems they can connect with that energy you know okay I am this way a little bit like a zodiac sign Mm -hmm. I, I act in certain ways and sometimes I'm I'm in challenging situations and knowing what kind of animal I have as my my totem animal helps me to to understand and be more loving towards myself and to see that potential you know yeah is there um a best place to like figure out how how would one figure out their totem did you like go online is it based on your birthday or do you meditate on it like how would one how would someone so like i'm curious but if anyone else was curious of like what how do i how does one find their totem do you do you just yeah. meditate i would say the best way is to give me a call and to make a session but uh awesome. there's other ways just just um meditating as possible what what animals have i always been attracted to it can be that it's right you know i always say hippo and elephant have been my guides as a as when I was a young kid and, that, and they're not my totem animals but I've always loved elephants and hippos so but that is a strong kind of indicator of guides or that those animals we have strong connections with will be somewhere in our energy system and will be assisting us and so if we if we we can draw tarot cards which is possible I would say it's all possible it just depends on how honest are we you know how mm -hmm. honest are we for the process and i feel it is difficult it's more difficult if i have 72 cards with animals and i draw one it just feels like maybe i didn't do this right or maybe you know so it needs it needs confidence with working with tarot cards when you really trust that okay now i'm drawing my totem animal and i will draw the right card but other than that just meditation a shamanic journey 
uh, observing animals, how do I resonate with them? And maybe I always, if I look at myself, like if I, if I see me in pictures or videos, maybe I see I move a certain way and that reminds me of an animal or something. There's so many ways. So going back to there's no right and wrong, just the, the, the intention is good enough. You know, if I say I want to find out about my totem animal, that intention stated will help me to find it. Yes, I love that. Well, everyone listening, definitely reach out to Martin <laughs> to find your totem animal and also learn the work, do the work, be in this beautiful, blissful energy that he emanates. I can't thank you enough for thank this you. beautiful conversation. Thank you so much for being here. And yeah, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Aloha. <laughs>